Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media. Uh, and I am interviewing uh, Molly Quinn and Mickey Reese and all the other team with Agnes uh, premiering at uh, Tribeca, I think, tonight? No. No, that's not right. I, I got mixed mixed up but anyways it's premiering at Tribeca <laughs> um so why don't you all uh introduce yourselves sure thing I'm uh, Mickey Reese and I'm the co-writer and director of this movie and uh I'm Molly Quinn I okay. play Mary and Agnes and I uh produced the film okay Correction, it's premiering this Saturday. I got Saturday. I was gonna say Friday, so been a heck of a so that's great. <laughs> um so the first question I have um is a, so for a film that's about something so serious as hey, we've got an exorcism here maybe we should take care of that. It's very, very um, funny, um, to put it lightly. Um, and I just wanted to know, anyone can answer, um, where did that come from? Uh, well, I, I, I just, uh, I, I try to make all of them, you know, no matter what uh, kind of genre we're working in, I always try to make, uh, everything as funny as I, as I possibly can. Me and uh, my co-writer, John Selvage, like are, you know, we don't necessarily uh, write jokes into the script. We just kind of like on set, we pick the, the uh, you know, pick, pick moments that are, that, uh, that can be funny. So almost, so it's like the, the jokes are being told through the characters and through the character silliness without actually just saying outright jokes. Um, and I think that's just a matter of like having fun, you know, and just like keeping it light and keeping it fun. And I think it becomes a more, a breezier watch that way than watching something super heavy handed and serious. Sure. I just watched Conjuring 3 and I, I think it could have used a little bit more jokes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it last night too. And it's also super weird because they both have a, a uh, character named Father Donahue and I'm like, okay, I'm, my lines are blurring here. And while watching Agnes or Conjuring, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, we, we have the better, we have the better Father Donahue. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that one. That, <laughs> I didn't really like that as much. Um, but uh, anyways, um, so there, um, Molly, you kind of take a lot of the second half of the film. Um, and it's very, very different. It's, you know, at, we're talking about, you know, how the first half is kind of funny. There's the second half that's kind of just almost its own movie. It could be its own movie. Um, and what kind of, I, I don't know, approach uh, did you take to just almost disconnecting yourself from these two halves? That's a great question. Um, for me, it was really kind of starting even before the script began. So starting with what Mary's life would have been like before she became a sister and focusing on uh, this relationship she had with her son, you know, her young son and, and losing him. And, and that kind of driving her to the convent to run away from her pain and to find a place to contemplate her son all day long you know that when she talks about loving God when she had her son what she's really saying is when she felt whole when she was experiencing love it was towards this child and so of course it feels divine because your whole body is is filled up with the best emotions in the world and and then that's taken from her and it and it makes her rightfully angry right yeah but I think because she's not in the convent for the right reasons, it allows in this malevolent presence that starts to infect everything around her. And instead of facing her own either demonic or personal demons, she just says, peace, I'm out. 
and she leaves. So, you know, again, Mary is just yeah, she really does. She she's like gone, no no interest because she can't. She doesn't know how to heal, you know, and she's also unwilling to heal. Yeah. People keep giving her good advice, but she's not willing to take it. So, yeah. working on a character like that was um it really stretched me as an actor and was really what made me excited to play this, you know, someone who was unwilling to learn. Yeah, for sure. I was a, gotta be honest, was it even thinking about that when watching the movie, but now I might have to go back and watch that a second time because I didn't, I didn't even think about the whole physical pain aspect of it. Um, so I'll have to go back and watch that again um, when it premieres this set, uh, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please, um, please do. Because I, uh, my main thing is that I got from Molly. I not Molly, Mary. Um, it's okay. We're the same person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was that um, she was just kind of like peace. I can't deal with this. Mm -hmm. Um. And that, that there's the, this constant pull from her old um, convent um, that, hey, maybe you could do this. And she's just like, no, no I'm not going to do that. I just want to live in this apartment. That's all I want to do. Um, and I guess, I don't know who the question would be to, um, anyone can answer. Um, where did that come up in the in the development process. I mean, where did the idea of the point of no return of um, religion, what whichever denomination you choose, where did that come up um, in the production process? I feel like Mickey and I came to that through a collaboration. Okay. You know, Mickey is so great about um, choosing what our shots are going to look like and, and the end goal of the film and I really got to focus on Mary and her religious experience or lack of religious experience. Wouldn't you say, Mickey? Mm -hmm. I feel like that was just a, a really good collaboration. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and I think like uh, that second half is also very uh, uh, aimless, uh, you know, very this, this kind of, you're just hanging out with the characters. There's not necessarily anything uh, completely spelled out that you're supposed to be like you know feeling so it's like you're really projecting your own emotions onto it and everybody's going to see something different out of the film um um which is i think you know always it should be every movie should be made that way i feel like but um for sure but yeah so um so really yeah it was just a matter of like molly just really getting into uh that character and and understanding it and not having any uh have any, any like specific goals in mind, but just kind of living in it. You yeah. Know I mean? So then it just kind of creates this, uh, this uh, emotional or emotionless world, like, you know, whatever you kind of want to put onto it in, in the end there, because there's not anything specific that we're going for there other than just to like, you know, kind of like live in these characters. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think that's what I feel in that second half is the aimless, um, aspect that you talk about Mickey um is that I was just like okay where am I going here but then when you get to the end uh obviously no spoilers um but it does feel like you do have an aim at the end of it it's like okay let's just talk about trauma and what that does to a person uh religiously or even mentally um for sure. So I, I very much appreciated that um, because that's not something we normally get in these, I, I, I don't know, religious movies. I, I, I don't think that's necessarily a genre, but sure. um, it can be religious. It's a religious movie. It's uh, a horror movie. It's there's, there's, there's lots of different aspects. There's lots of different things it can be, but I love it being referred to as a religious movie. That's, that's great. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it I think, the biggest thing I've walked away with from this film is question, it is just opening up of a discussion of, about the, uh, 
what happens when somebody walks away. Um, and I guess, was that from personal experience or was that just something you just two came up with together? Well, I certainly haven't walked away from a convent, <laughs> but I've walked away from other things. So it's kind of just, you know, I guess, you know, uh, kind of, uh, there's, you're always, you know, putting yourself into it somehow. You know what I mean? But I think, uh, I think Molly did most of the legwork on that, you know, just putting yourself into the character and, and uh, figuring that out and, and more, more clearly defining those, uh, those themes that, you, that you're talking about. Yeah, I am. Um, I, yeah. I was very religious growing up. Um, and when I was 16, I, I lost a friend unexpectedly. And everyone around me was like, everything happens for a reason. God has a plan. And I really hated that. It made me very angry and no one was around to help me deal with that anger. So I, I really drifted from God and, and became agnostic. But the obsession with Christianity and uh, the divine obviously still exists. But at the end of that movie and, and with talking with um, uh, Benjamin played by uh, Jay Korowitz, that is really what it's about. It was kind of me confronting all these adults that I knew that said, let it go. Don't remember, move on. You know, she's in a better place. Yeah. And, and I reject that. I completely reject that. And I want them to reject it too. I feel like Mary is kind of taunting him when she says, nobody can say goodbye. Yeah, um, that actually was something repeating in my head when my dad left. Uh, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I had a very, very similar experience. Um, just a ton of anger. And I just walked away for a while um, and came back. But still, I just, yeah. I, I, I think I related to that just one line mm -hmm. of you never, sometimes you never get to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't, yeah. you know. Uh, it was something that happened before I even got there. So, um, yeah. but uh, thank you guys all for being here. I think that's all the time I have. Um, but I just want to say this is a super film um, and a funny film. Uh, I think I was talking with somebody yesterday about it on the podcast and was talking about hours is what it reminded me of the flies uh -huh. uh, and then but yeah everyone just go see this uh, it, it's showing up on saturday um sometime just go to tribecafilm.com so so it can all be easier uh, but yeah just check it out it, it, it's it's great uh, i hope it gets picked up by a major major person i know i see already bought dating in new york so I hope whoever picks it up just really gives it the campaign it deserves. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure. No problem.